2.99% that's the rate I have on my personal mortgage see here it is hello friends Sharon Amit here and if you're checking this channel out for the first time here we discuss topics that make you financially aware and empowered the average 30 year fixed mortgage rate in the US was well around 3.5% till about 2021 but ever since then it has been increasing at an incredible pace it went up to 7.79% in October of 2023 that represented the highest mortgage rate since November of 2000. That obviously meant higher cost of borrowing. Since then, the rates declined from that October high to about 6.6% in February. But now they have started climbing back again and now are well over 7%. Higher mortgage rates combined with the high housing prices means that housing is a much more costlier expense for every new home buyer as compared to just a few years ago. Our dear financial advisor, Don, you don't have enough money. According to residential real estate firm Redfin, the average mortgage monthly payment in April of 2024, uh, when considering a 30-year fixed mortgage and the prevailing home prices, is about $2,873. It's 13% higher than just an year ago. A mortgage interest is part of the cost that the lender charges you for taking out a home loan. So each month, as part of your monthly payment, you pay the interest that is accrued on the loan, as well as a small part of principal of the loan. That means the interest rate on the loan greatly influence the monthly payment that you pay and the overall cost of your loan. So scoring a lower interest rate may help you save a lot of money over the lifetime of the loan. So here's a scenario. Let's consider 500,000 dollar house on which the borrower is going to bring 20% as down payment. So the loan amount will be about $400,000. Now in early 22, according to Freddie Mac, the average interest rate on a 30 year fixed mortgage was about 3.5%. But in 2024, which is present day, for the same loan, the average interest rate has climbed up to as high as 7.55%. So what is the impact on monthly payments? Using the mortgage calculator on bankrate.com, if we take the loan amount to be $400,000 and put the interest rate as 3.5%, the estimated monthly payment in early 2022, which includes only the principal and interest, is about $17.96. Keep in mind, we are only looking at principal and interest. We're not including things like property taxes or insurance, which are typically included in the monthly payment. Now, but if we look at 2024, with the interest rate of 7.55%, the monthly payment on the same exact same loan amount rises to $2,811. That's a very significant difference of $1,015 per month. This extra $1,000 may just be the difference between a family getting the house of their dreams or not getting it. See, both home prices and interest rate have actually gone up. So there is no real way to avoid paying this extra money one way or another. However, what you can actually do is to keep the monthly payment at a reasonable level because you're making a commitment to make this monthly payment come what may for several years in the future, potentially 30 years. One way to get that lower monthly payment is by getting a lower rate on your mortgage. Say a 4.5% instead of the 7.5% that is prevalent today, that would be 3% lower than what is typically being offered. Is it really possible? Of course it is. There are some creative ways in which it can be done. The first method is a 2-1 buy-down. A 2-1 buy-down is a type of financing that offers a lower interest rate in the first two years of the loan before it goes back to the typical normal interest rate for the rest of the loan period. And in the 2-1 buy-down, typically the first year will have 2% lower than the regular rate and the second year will have 1% lower than the regular rate before you pay the regular rate for the rest of the life of the loan. For example, if the rate of the loan that you are qualifying for is 7.5% and you go with this 2-1 buy-down option, then the rate at which your monthly payments will be calculated for year one would be 5.5%. For year two, it will be 6.5%. And for year three onwards, it will be back to 7.5%. What this arrangement does is gets you two extra years to prepare for this higher monthly payment that you are going to have to pay. And where it is also helpful is that in the initial year when you buy a house, your expenses are typically high because you are moving into a new house, buying a lot of new furniture and other stuff. So the first two years having lower monthly payment actually is very helpful. By the third year, it is expected that you would have stabilized your expenses and be ready to pay the higher monthly payment. This type of financing, the 2-1 buy-down, is most typically offered by home builders 
would have built a lot of houses and they're now trying to sell it to the buyers. The builder in turn would work with some financial institution like bank or a credit union. In most cases, the builder would be paying the bank some sort of a fee to buy down the interest rate for a couple of years so that you as the buyer gets a lower interest rate. So if you're looking to buy a new house from a builder, make sure you inquire about the 2-1 buy down option. Remember, in this world, unfortunately, you don't always get what you deserve. You get what you can negotiate. And a word of caution, you must ensure that you are going to get a fair deal on the home price itself. It should not happen that the builder increases the price of the home and then offers this 2-1 buy down to you. Negotiate and lock down a fair price on the house before even discussing this 2-1 buy down option or any other financing option for that matter. But Ahmed, if I want to buy an older house from an existing homeowner, will they offer this 2-1 buy down option? No, they likely won't. But don't worry, there are other methods that you can use to lower your rates. Method two, go to a smaller bank or use a broker. Since last couple of years, small banks and lenders in US have been facing a lot of issues. Small banks are those lenders that have less than $10 billion in assets. They're under a lot of stress and the culprit typically are commercial real estate loans and the ever rising interest rates that are prevailing for last few years. So now these banks are desperate to shore up their balance sheets. And one way they can do that is by attracting new deposits, getting customers to put their money in the bank. Now, some of the, these banks have seen some customers starting to come back, but they still need to do a lot more. So now what many of these banks, smaller banks are doing is that they're offering a customer much lower rate on their mortgage. If the customer commits to moving their other banking business like savings and checking accounts, deposits to this smaller community bank. This is something that you must consider and explore if there are banks in your areas that are doing that. Just make sure that the lender that you're considering offers accounts that are insured by FDIC. FDIC insurance is fully backed by the faith and credit of the United States government. It simply means that FDIC, the government entity, guarantees that for any single borrower, an amount of up to $250,000 that they have kept in the bank in their savings account is completely safe. If you don't find any smaller bank in an area offering your mortgage, or if you don't feel safe moving your money to these smaller banks, then consider this third option. So third method is buying down your mortgage. In this method, you're literally purchasing a lower mortgage rate. This is also called buying down your rate or buying points. Simply put, in this method, you agree to pay a lump sum upfront fee. And in lieu of that fee, your lender agrees to lower the rate that is being put on the lifetime of the mortgage. Usually for one point, you will pay about 1% of the loan amount. And in return, the lender would reduce the mortgage rate by about 0.25%. You can typically buy a few of these points to lower your mortgage rate. Let's see an example. Suppose the loan amount is that same $400,000 and the rate that you are normally being offered is about 7.5%. Now you decide to purchase four points. Four points means 4% of the $400,000 loan amount which comes to $16,000. So you pay this $16,000 upfront to the bank and return the bank calculates 4 into 0.25, that is 1%. So your rate of the mortgage gets reduced from 7.5% to 6.5% for the lifetime of your loan. In a similar fashion, you may decide to purchase even more points and bring the rate down even further. Now to determine if buying points is a wise financial move, you need to calculate the break-even point for them. The break-even point is the point at which the savings from lower interest rate outweigh the upfront payment that you had to make. To calculate your break-even point, just take the total amount that you pay upfront and divide it by the monthly savings that you are now getting on your mortgage loan. Whatever is the resultant number, that's the number of months at which you achieve break-even. In our example above, a 1% reduction in the rate would result in about $270 less being paid every month on the loan. And remember, you paid $16,000 to reduce the rate by 1% or the $270. So the break-even point would be $16,000 divided by $270, which is about 59 months. If you intend to keep this home for longer than 59 months or about five years, then it may be financially wise to pay that upfront fee if you can and reduce your rates. According to Freddie Mac, more than half of US borrowers paid for buying some sort of points last year to reduce the mortgage rate rate on their loans, which is among the highest ever. This is a testament of the high rate and the pressure that it is putting on everyone. I hope in this video, you learned about some of the options that you have to try and reduce the rate on your mortgage. You can and should explore these further if you are actually in the market for a mortgage. Remember, knowledge is power. You may not find your bank 
or your realtor talking more about these options because they don't benefit them. But you owe it to yourself and your family to explore all these options before you commit to a mortgage. Choose the option that is right for you and your family. If you like this video, check out this other one as well. I would also appreciate if you can give us a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.